So the first step in making this occlusal splint is to paint a thin layer of sanoacolate or super glue onto your mandibular casts. Uh, this helps prevent the cast from abrading. It just adds a thin layer of uh, hard acrylic over it. We're going to be checking the occlusion quite a bit, so I don't want the cast to abrade. You can take an air water hose and just gently blast a stream of air to thin it out. The next step is to check the occlusion. What we want is to adjust the splint so that you have a minimal amount of space, maybe two or three millimeters between your splint and the mandibular cast. So once you have the marks, you'll take a acrylic burr on your straight hand piece and to start to adjust out the areas that come into contact. So go around and um, check where your marks are and just gently remove a little bit in uh, each area that has a mark. Remember in the posterior you don't need to grind as much because it's on a hinge. So we'll repeat the process. We'll check the marks again and see where the splint is hitting the opposite cast. And we'll continue to grind until we minimize the amount of anterior open bite that we have. So here you can see after we've adjusted the occlusion that the space between the teeth here are minimal. So that minimizes the amount of acrylic that we need to add in between to get our mutually protected occlusion. At this point we want to paint the mandibular cast with Vaseline. This prevents any of the orthoacrylic that we're going to add to the splint from sticking to the lower cast. Now we're going to brush the splint material with uh, a thin layer of monomer and this just helps the acrylic adhere to your splint material. So we take our powder and mix it with our monomer and remember this is a chemically activated acrylic. So it's going to go through differing stages of polymerization. We're going to wait until it gets to this uh, just before a doughy stage before we place it uh, onto the splint. You don't want it too runny, otherwise it will spill everywhere. Uh, but you don't want it too doughy where it won't um, kind of mold to the, um, to the opposing teeth. It's almost like a warm honey consistency. So now once you get to that consistency, you can start to layer it onto the splint. And you want to visualize about how much uh, space there is in between the casts uh, so that you know approximately how much material to place on, on there. So just gently layer it on. So you can use your finger to start to spit out so that it'll uh, blend with the split material a lot uh, better so there's not sort of a seam that forms between the acrylic and the splint. If you want you can take just a light layer of monomer to help spread out the material. This will allow that acrylic to flow a little bit better. So once you got it spread out evenly at about the height that you want you'll end up closing your articulator and since it's in a doughy consistency it's going to press against the opposing teeth and it's going to form um, sort of a perfect occlusion where all the teeth are in contact here. We can now take a brush and with some monomer just continue to paint the acrylic so it blends well with the splint material. What you also want to pay attention to is any acrylic that flows onto your mandibular cast. You, don't, you want to minimize the amount of acrylic that flows into the embrasure spaces so that as it cures, it doesn't lock the acrylic uh, onto the cast, even though we've placed the Vaseline on there. Once it's cured, uh, you want to remove it from the cast and take a acrylic burr and start to trim off the uh, extra ridges that have formed uh, from the indents. So you don't want to... Um, remove any of the material from the cusp tip areas or where your incisal edges has indented into the acrylic but you want to take away all the excess material um, that had formed around that.
So you want to continue to uh, trim the acrylic and blend the acrylic with the splint material so that you have just one continuous seamless kind of transition between the acrylic and your splint material. Now once again we'll check the occlusion and just want to verify that we have contact on all the teeth. So now that you know where the cuss tips mark, you want to again remove any of the ledges that may have formed uh, around uh, your occlusal marks. Be careful not to actually adjust away your contact points, but you want sort of a flat surface surrounding um, all the contact points. So we'll check the occlusion again and just verify that we have all the marks. So you want to see marks all the way around. In this case, we had um, accidentally removed some of the marks in the anterior. So in the posterior, you can see a well-distributed um, occlusal marks, but in the anterior, we ground away just a little bit more acrylic than we needed to. So to fix that, what we can do is just add some orthoacrylic um, in the contact areas. So we're just taking a little um, monomer and uh, powder and kind of uh, sprinkling it on into the lingual surface of the maxillary anterior teeth. Again, we're going to wait until it reaches a little bit of a doughy stage before we close it down. We also want to paint the opposing teeth with Vaseline so that the acrylic doesn't stick to it. So now I'll close the articulator and the acrylic will form against the incisal edges of your mandibular cast. So once again we'll check our occlusion and what we're looking for is um, occlusal marks all over our splint. So remember mutually protected occlusion, one of the principles is you want to have even contact um, when the teeth come together, both anterior and posterior. So now we're going to check our excursive movements. And the other principle is that we want the canines to end up separating all the back teeth. So we'll do the marks just in uh, centric occlusion in red, and then when we go in excursives in blue. And here you can see that our blue marks when we go in excursive movement is actually off of the first premolar when we actually want it against the canine. So just to show you again, um, we'll move the articulator in a lateral movement and you'll be able to see as we move it that there's actually separation at the canine area, but it's the first premolar that is actually in contact with the um, splint. So again, we want canine guidance. So what we'll do is we'll move the uh, mark on the first premolar and add to the area of the canine. So with the brush, uh, again, you'll salt and pepper with a little um, orthoacrylic. So basically what we're doing is building a ramp that starts from the contact point, And you want to build it towards the incisal edge so that as the mandibular uh, canine comes into contact, it's going to ride off of that ramp and separate the back teeth so that you avoid contact in the posterior. So once that's cured, you want to verify it again, and now you can see how we built a little ramp and all the posts of your teeth are separated in that excursive movement. So we'll check it again with the articulating paper. So red to mark the marks in centric occlusion, and blue to mark the excursive movement. Now we can see the line that we want uh, on the canine. So we're looking for a line that starts in the contact area and uh, goes all the way through through the incisal edge. So we'll check the same on the uh, contralateral side, and now we can see lines on both of the canines. So once you're done with the canines, you want to slide uh, the articulator and protrusive and see where the marks are against the incisors. What we're looking for is to maximize the number of lines coming off of the central and lateral incisors. So you can see we only have marks on uh, one side. So what we'll do is adjust out uh, those marks. 
and we'll check in on the articulator again and see if we can pick up some more contacts on the other two incisors. So we'll check with articulum paper and now we can see four lines off of the anterior region. So we have canine marks going on lateral and then our incisors um, separate the back teeth in protrusive movements. So the last thing we want to do is pumice um, the splint so that we get uh, something nice and smooth and that's going to be comfortable in the patient's mouth.